Welcome. We're going to talk about my hair today and how I've lost about 70% of it. My hair is a very, very large part of my identity, which sounds ridiculous and it's looking a bit ridiculous at the moment. But I've always had thick, long, luscious, dark brown hair that has been like naturally sun kissed by the sun. I've never dyed it. I rarely wash it. I treat it with essential oils. And I had so many people my entire life asking me about it and what I do and commenting on my hair. And when you go to the shops on a regular basis and people go, oh my God, I love your hair. Oh, your hair's so beautiful. What do you do to it? All the time. It unintentionally becomes a part of who you are. And it sounds silly because it's just hair and people cut their hair all the time and they dyed and some people have no hair and some people have lots of hair and it's curly and it's straight and it doesn't change who I am as a person, but it is a large part of my identity. And when it starts falling out and you don't understand why, and in your own opinion, you look after yourself and you eat well and you exercise and you sleep and your hair starts falling out, that doesn't equate to a healthy way of life. And it really, really throws you. It was a really challenging time. So my hair started falling out in at the start of March, around the period of the first lockdown for COVID. And I lo I've now lost about 70% of my hair, I reckon, has completely fallen out. I used to not be able to wrap a hair tie around it nearly more than three times, and now I can get it around, you know, about six. It's so thin when you group it all together. My plaits are really narrow. I never used to be, so even though it's still long and it might still look full, it's definitely not. 70% of my hair is gone and it's stopped falling out now thank goodness and now i have a party of um new regrowth which is so much fun but it means it's growing back which is fantastic and i'm going to tell you why it happened and what has been going on with it when i first noticed it all coming out i went and got my bloods taken to check everything because I was convinced that I was just really deficient in something and that was causing my hair to fall out something like zinc or vitamin e everything came back completely normal so even my hormones everything and this is what's happened with every blood test I've ever gotten before it's always just come back completely normal so that was great but also equally frustrating because I had no idea what was going on bloods were fine Second thought I had was that some of you may know I did a water fast upon returning back home from Bali because I got so, so sick towards the end of Bali that I had incredible bloating and discomfort. So I went on a seven day water fast. I had done it before previously for 10 days and no negative side effects from it. That's why I did it again because I found it to be a very, very positive experience for my body and for myself. I don't recommend anyone go on a water fast without doing your own research. First, it was beneficial for me. All my bloating went away. But then about six weeks later, all my hair started falling out. So I was, I had convinced myself that perhaps I'd done this to myself. So through not nourishing my body for those seven days, even though it healed other aspects, perhaps my hair had started falling out. That was a really horrific mental process to go through for those couple of days when I thought I had done this to myself because my hair, as I mentioned before, was such a large part of my identity and maybe something I had done to better myself was now causing all my hair to fall out. And at this point, I didn't know if my hair was ever going to stop falling out. Just to back it up a little bit, when I mean falling out, like lumps and lumps and lumps of hair coming out every day so I kept this because I needed to show like a doctor so that would come out of my hairbrush every single day there's another one it's disgusting I have some more hair oh this one's really fun I rolled this one up into a nice tight little ball I mean like you could kill someone with that it was foul so it's all falling out at the root it wasn't breaking so if you look closely at like all the hair you can see the root in there so it was just it was falling out of my head and there was nothing i could do about it so i had all my hair coming out every time i would brush it, it would be coming out and out and out 
absolutely stressing me out, didn't know what the cause was, it. bloods were fine. At this point, I thought I had done it completely to myself and that was really, really difficult to come to terms with because what if a choice I had made had now meant I was going to go bald? I, I genuinely didn't know if it was ever going to stop falling out. So I made an appointment with Sinclair Dermatology and she informed me, which I didn't realise could happen at all, that when there is an acute stress on the body, our hair can stop growing. So basically the root inside your scalp stops growing and then when it gets to the point where it's going to fall out, it's about six weeks later. And that completely aligned with me getting sick in Bali. She said that it's very common for people when they get a sudden illness, an acute illness to their system, something they're not used to, that your hair can actually stop growing and then keep growing, which is, it is, you can tell by all this growth. So my hair follicles aren't dead, they're alive, but it can stop growing temporarily and then all that hair is going to fall out and it's going to shed. It is called acute telogen effluvium. And that is what I had. Basically, there is nothing that can be done for the hair that is going to fall out at all. It is just going to fall out. So Bali, I love you, Bali. I love Bali so, so much. Bali left me with 70% of my hair falling out and with scars on my faces from getting these extreme cold sores that I just could not get rid of because I was so, so sick. I got extreme belly belly. I had to go on an IV drip. I genuinely thought that I was going to die. I didn't know how I was gonna go home. We had to postpone our flights because Michael and I both couldn't fly. I was on so much medication for a few days, which I don't take any medication. It was an awful, awful experience. So it was the gift though that keeps on giving because my, yeah, as I said, my cold sores have scarred my face and all my hair started to fall out. My doctor pinpointed it down to Bali and said, 100% it's that. I told her about the water fast. I told her about every other extreme thing I'd done before with diet and how I live. And she's like, no, it's you being sick. So that was a relief because it was not something I had done to myself, which was nice because I could remove that blame and I could shift the blame to an external source, which was getting sick. But it was still really hard to process because what she couldn't tell me was how much hair I was going to lose and when it was going to stop. So when I spoke to her, I probably only lost about 30% of my hair. And then as it kept going, more and more kept falling out. What I am doing to fix my hair is, well, you can't do anything to fix the hair that is falling out. That's just going to fall out. It is all stopped falling out now, which is great. Uh, when I brush my hair, just a normal amount comes out on the brush. But what I can do is I can take certain medication that is going to help with the new growth. So this is all like rapid, insane. Well, that's old, but all of this hair coming out of here. Is crazy and all of this if it's happening here it's happening all over my head which is great but I just look a bit like sideshow Bob which is not so much fun but that's okay I've been taking two things one is this which is just a vitamin supplement that they made up specifically for me so in it is biotin tyrosine mm, vitamin E zinc vitamin C that's it. So just like all your basics, but good vitamins for hair growth. I truly believe I get enough of those vitamins through my actual whole foods diet, but more of them is only going to help. So I take one of those a day. The other thing that she prescribed me is this, which is minoxidil. So minoxidil is basically what you will find in Rogaine. So if you go just to like the supermarket or the pharmacy and you want like men's Rogaine because you've got like slight balding, that's what I've been given. So I take one of those a day. It's a really, really small dose. It can have side effects, fun times. I love a bit of medication. It can result in facial hair. But as you can see, I do not have that happening. So she doubled my dose. So my hair would grow back a bit faster and a bit stronger and thicker. And I can make sure the hair follicles don't die. Hunter's so cute. He gives it to me every day. It was medicine for mummy's hair. It's very beautiful. But alas, I will probably never have the same hair I had before. It'll grow back different or it'll grow back not as thick. Who knows? 
at this point in time, I'm like, it's just hair and it doesn't matter right now. But as I was going through this, it was really, really difficult. So especially when you combine that with COVID and going through the first lockdown when everything was way more up in the air than it was now, it was a really, really difficult time. Mum found me just absolutely hysterical one day. I had one huge like emotional meltdown about it all. And then there would, would just be moments. And now when I look back on pictures of us in Bali or when I look back on any pictures of us before then, like my hair is so, so different and it's so thick and it's so luscious. And it does make me incredibly sad because I would like to have my hair back that way. And maybe it will be, but who knows for now, this is my hair. It looks a bit dry and a bit ratty, but I can't do much about it. So I've made myself also like an essential oil hair blend for hair loss, which I've been applying to my scalp once a week too, because that can only help. And yeah, taking this medication. So fingers crossed, it all goes back well. I know at the end of the day, it's just hair. I really, truly understand it's just hair. I'm not dying. And that's what I found really difficult as well when this happened and I was feeling so upset about it. I was feeling really guilty for feeling those feelings because people were actually dying from COVID and dying from other things and committing suicide because they couldn't work and they couldn't earn money. So many other big things were happening in the world, but this was my big thing. And it took me a while to really wrap my head around the fact that I was allowed to feel these feelings, even though I'm the one to preach, feel everything. It's still really challenging to, to practice what you preach. So I know it's just hair. But it is a part of my identity and it was really, really, really difficult for me to come to terms with what was happening, especially when I didn't know if my hair was ever going to stop falling out. For a while there, I was joking and convinced that I would just, at the end of isolation, I would leave bald with a beard because of the medication I was on. As you can see, that's not happened. But it was really, really difficult. So I am sending so much love to anyone who is going through anything that you think is not a big deal, like hair loss. It is a big deal to you because that is what you are going through. So treat yourself with love and kindness and compassion. It's also really important for me to say that I am not a doctor. I don't know all the details and all the ins and outs whatsoever. I just know what my doctor told me and the information that she shared with me about this issue. So please, if you think this is happening to you, seek help, see a doctor yourself and get some advice on what is actually going on. But otherwise, hopefully me sharing has shed some light on a situation you didn't know about and potentially makes you feel less alone if you are going through something similar. That's my only intention when I share these things is by putting myself out there and by sharing my story with any issue in my life and, and being vulnerable we feel more connected to one another. So please let me know how this sat with you. And if you need anyone to talk to about anything, please reach out because I would love to chat to you about it. Be kind to yourself. At the end of the day, it's just hair. It will grow back, but that is what happened. So 70% of my hair is gone and we will survive. Hope you enjoyed.